A pair of old rivals are reunited in the Class B Boys Championship tonight in the top two seeds in the tournament. Second seed Carthage playing for its first Section 3 crown in six years after ousting East Syracuse Manoa in the semifinals. They'll take on the top seed, James Bill DeWitt, who has won three of the last five Class B crowns. The Red Rams rolling into the final with 16 straight wins, but a tough one in the semis needing two goals in the final quarter to finally tame the Purple Tigers of Cortland. Coming up, Carthage and James Villewitt to decide the Class B championship next. On the campus of Syracuse University at Section 3 Boys Championship Lacrosse. Tonight, the Class B final. Matching the top two seeds in the tournament, the Carthage Comets and the defending champion, Jamesville DeWitt, Red Rams. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Coin Field. I'm Mark Larson with Dale Drypolter. We have Dan Liedka also down on the field tonight. The Red Rams and the Comets, these are the two teams everybody thought were going to be here, and here they are, one game to play for the sectional crown. Lots of red out here, and mm -hmm. uh, both teams, they sure can play lacrosse up in Carthage and right up the road in Jamesville do it, so it's going to be a great matchup. And interestingly, these two teams met uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and J.D. won that one by one goal. Here's the road to the championship game, just six teams making the Class B playoffs, and both J.D. and Carthage winning easily to move into the title game here tonight. Carthage Comets, a very high-scoring team led by Rob Grimm, who's been a superstar since he was an eighth grader up in Carthage. Wow, when you can play in eighth grade, that's amazing. Robert Grimm, two-time All-American, 119 points on the year. That's, a, that's an amazing statistic. And, of course, James DeWitt is going to have to watch him very, very carefully. And Robert, one of three Grimm brothers on the team. Kyle Gable, whose older brother won a national championship with SUNY Cortland, is in the nets. You know what? You got a hot goaltender. You got a great chance at uh, going on from here and moving on through the states. But right now, he's a very hot goaltender and very important cog in this Carthage uh, machine. Now, the JD Red Rams, the defending state champions as well as sectional champions, Mike Edwards, one of their senior leaders, the leading scorer. Well, you know what? When you got a guy like Mike Edwards, senior tech, a lot of leadership, 58 goals, leads the team. Obviously, that Carthage is going to have to put somebody on him and keep him at check. And at the midfield, John Clark has scored 50 points as a non-starter. Well, you know what? You've got to have guys come off the bench, and if John Clark can come off the bench and score that many points, he's obviously going to be very, very important for J.D. It's going to be a great matchup. A couple of high-power teams. Again, the Red Rams winning by one 16 days ago. Comets coach Kirk Venequattro says, not that we're counting. A chance for revenge here in the Class B title game when we come back. Time Warner Sports coverage of Section 3 High School Boys Lacrosse Championships is brought to you by Cole Muffler Brake. For an oil change, tires, battery, or New York State inspection, there's more reason than ever to visit Cole Muffler Brake and give your car a treat. By the UPS stores of Central New York. With 13 locations throughout Central New York, there's a UPS store near your neighborhood. And by Drivers Village. Visit driversvillage.com today. Back. Welcome back to Coin Field. We're getting set for the Class B championship game between the top seed Jamesville DeWitt and the number two seed Carthage Comets. JD coming off a one goal win in the semifinals and Carthage a four goal win in the semis to get to this point. And as they introduce our starting lineups, let's introduce our sideline reporter tonight, Dan Liebke. Hey, thanks, Mark. Checked in with both coaches, talked a little strategy. First from the JD sideline, Coach Archer, he talked about very important to stop that deadly Carthage fast break attack. It's all about ball control, and that starts with ground balls and faceoffs. The other side, Coach Venequattro for Carthage talked about six on six will take care of itself. He says, JD beats you with defense and numbers, and what he meant by that was be aware of where the double teams are coming, take care of the ball, and also he mentioned last time they played, they struggled clearing the ball, need to improve there tonight if they're going to be successful. Back upstairs, guys. All right, thank you, Dan. And now tonight's Geico starting lineups. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. 
On the left, the Carthage Comets with three brothers Grimm. Thomas, just a freshman, 117 points this year, just two less than Robert Grimm and Jamie Grimm, the middle brother, plays on the defensive side. For Jamesville DeWitt, Jeff Vetter, another one of those guys that really was a role player last year but has stepped up this season for Jamesville DeWitt. And he really was the difference in the first game between these two teams about two weeks ago when JD won by one. Goaltender for the Carthage Comets. We mentioned Kyle Gable. His brother Ben is in the audience tonight. Kyle's brother Ben won a national championship at SUNY Cortland a couple years ago. And there's the head coach, Kirk Venequatro, in his 20th season at Carthage. Five sectional titles, none since 2002. He's got his son Tony also on his coaching staff and his cousin Kevin Cook. And we'll tell you more about Kevin later on. For the JD Red Ramps, they're Goaltender, a senior, Alex Jorgensen, who has really stepped up this season and really had a much better year than his coach expected him to have. Alex, 61% save percentage for the J.D. Red Rams. And the head coach of the Red Rams is another former Syracuse player, Jamie Archer. We've seen one former Syracuse player, Ron Doctor, win a championship here tonight. Jamie Archer looking to do the same for the second year in a row. Third season, and look at the record, 57 and seven, including a state title last year. At the faceoff X, it's Robert Grimm, the leading scorer for the Carthage Comets. Does a little bit of everything. Tom Abbott, one of the officials here tonight. Guy who was uh, also out of the final four in Foxborough last weekend. And the faceoff won by Grimm over Jake Braytek. And the Comets will have the opening possession. These two teams again played May 19th. Again, Coach Venequatro said 16 days ago, not that we're counting as they try and avenge that one goal loss 11 to 10 as JD won it. And the Red Rams rolling, as I mentioned, 16 straight wins coming into this sectional championship. And the first shot of the game is off the mark. On the run, it was Ben Koster who also has a younger brother on this team. Brother combo for Carthage, and we've seen a pretty good brother combo coming out of there the uh, last few years. The yeah. Powell brothers, if sure, you may have heard of them. And Casey Ryan and Mikey, the youngest to have played so far. There's another Powell brother, Mason Powell, now at Casanova. Breaking inside, and a shot and a score. Zach Mulvaney lost his man. His defenseman lost his, his stick. Behind the cage, and Mulvaney went in untouched, and he scores the opening goal. Yeah, he's doing a poke check right there. Loses his stick, Jared Nice, and then that causes a long slide, and really not much the goalie could do about it. He got inside, and but Nice lost his stick. Had to, can't play without it. You got to go pick it up, and that gave him a unsettled situation. That's going to be a trip. One of the senior co-captains for the Carthage Comets. Opens the scoring, Zach Mulvaney. 75 points now for the season. And a tripping penalty now called against the Red Rams. So 51 seconds in, they're down a goal and now down a man. Yeah, that's a tough situation. Uh, they've got, uh, they got a little momentum here in less than a minute gone. Carthage picking up the momentum. Let's see if they can do something with this man up. There's Mulvaney, who will play collegiately at SUNY Cortland next year, so he won't have to change his wardrobe. St. Colors. That's Thomas Grimm behind the cage. His older brother, Robert, is camping out right out front. As the Comets look to score the first two here. Very patient here in the man advantage. Now Thomas comes around and Robert changes places, goes behind. And talking to Coach Venequatro about having those brothers. And obviously you know, when you have all these guys related on the same team, as Koster's shot is saved nice off the save. foot of Jorgensen. But you know, obviously uh, it's instant chemistry when you have Brothers playing together, and they just seem to know where each other is instinctively. 
Another thing about the Grimm brothers that Coach Venequatra said he's never seen any of them angry with each other, which is a little bit unusual. You've got boys, right? Yeah, yeah right. And they tend to uh, Very solemn. bicker they, they, once yeah. in a while, right? Right, of course. But not the Grimm brothers. At least not that Coach Venequatra has seen. Here's Robert fakes the pass and the shot. Wheels around, fed Thomas off his stick, and Mulvaney picks up the ground ball. The Comet's very high-powered offensively, but showing a lot of patience here early on. Ben Coster on his way to playing for Hobart next year. Big kid, and 65 goals to lead the Comets. Gives it up out top to Mulvaney. Mulvaney gets a little pick. Oh, okay. Feeds in front and a bouncer over the cage. Nick Paroli, a freshman. He was all by himself, Mark. 29 goals on the season, could not finish that one. And Robert Grimm. Lost the ball. Scooped it back up, checked out of his stick again. Now just has to fling it backwards. And Mulvaney back to pick it up for Carthage. Nice job checking the ball loose by Jake Liebman, senior defenseman for the Red Rams, with the tough assignment of checking Robert Grimm. Yeah, he gave him a lot of different looks there. He slap check, poke checks, lift checks. One-on-one -on -one from the top here. Double. Leaves the man on top open momentarily. Move that ball, they do. And the shot never taken. As the Comets couldn't get it off, so the defense closed for JD. And now the Red Rams will look for their first offensive possession. They can get it across midfield. It's Braytek. Nice. Running into a double, triple team now. And Braytek does muscle his way across the center field line. They feed it inside. Comets close quickly. JD needs to settle it down. They, they've got, uh, just take your time, run your offense. And this is Vetter behind the cage. And Eric DeJohn actually with it. DeJohn comes around front and he got checked. As he released the shot, that drew a flag. The shot goes wide, but the Red Rams will go a man up. Illegal body check, up too high. You're going to see him, watch. Right there, though. well, that was in the back. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was high. No, it was just really illegal. It was in the back. Well, Pat Gibbons got yeah. his money's worth, didn't he? Yeah. I believe Gibbons was a member of that sectional championship football team, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that it certainly was a football move, wasn't it? Yeah. He the linebacker hit right there. Both teams have having a man up. JD down by one after they defenseman lost his stick and they took advantage of it. Oh, there's a missed pass. That's going to be a turnover for JD. Mark saw a lot couldn't the game pull it before in. This. I'm sorry, I was going to say we had, saw a lot of turnovers in the game before this. And at this level, boy, that really can hurt you because normally, I mean, obviously the teams that have gotten this far are really good and they really can take advantage of things. But right now, uh, they're trying to stop this clear of Carthage. Robert Grimm, one of the best running backs in the section, over 2,000 yards last season. Gets the clear. A little trouble clearing, I guess, in the first game. I didn't see it against JD, and they wanted to improve that. They got a nice clear there. Now Thomas Grimm draws plenty of attention as he gives it off to Mulvaney. He's still got a man in the box. So that's why they're doubling the ball, but they are just running now. They're even as they send in number 40 Peck for Carthage. Almost midway through this first quarter, Comet scored quickly, about 50 seconds in. And Zach Mulvaney lost his man and circled in front. Rim gets a little pick out top, sends a laser just to the left of the goal. The 
First team All-State football player, All-American lacrosse player. Robert Grimm on his way to Maryland Baltimore County, up and coming program. Was in the top 10 much of this season. And uh, Coach Vanacuatro very high, and Robert calls him maybe the best midfielder in the state. Maybe. Class B, anyway. Tough to argue with the numbers. Over oh, 350 nice career points. There's another number. An assist to Ben Coster. The big kid got right out front. Scored his 66th goal of the season. Assist number 63 for Grimm, and it's 2 0. That was a great look by Robert Grimm. He just was going away from the goal, saw Coster open on the crease, and Coster just turns and fires. Nice job by Coster. 2 0 Carthage. And face off in doubt. Going to be a play on push here. And possession will remain with Carthage, so the Red Rams having a difficult time getting their offense on the field. And the Comets back in the attack as Koster looks for a little room. Thomas Grimm behind the cage to Robert. And outside to Coster and really impressed with the patience here. As shown by Carthage. Robert, oh, what a spin move. Lost the ball, though. Good job by Jared Neese of staying with him. And now out of bounds, it's going to be off JD, and it'll stay with Carthage. So Thomas Grimm picking up his older brother and winning the ball back. Nice move. Mulvaney, a little hesitation, feeds in front. Oh, what a save by Gable. Or Jorgensen, rather. Nick Paroli right out front again. Yeah, that's the second time he's been open, and he hasn't been able to, uh, to finish it. But, boy, they've had him open on the crease a couple times, and they're looking for him. Man, forgive me if we uh, go back and forth with the names here. The uniform colors just so similar. It was Jorgensen with a big save there. Is Coster trying to get free. Check from behind. JD defense closing. Joe to Dario with the check. And now to Dario trying to scoop it along the sideline there. Finally pushed out of bounds. And it'll stay with Carthage. James to win. Having to play a lot of defense here. I was just going to say, time of possession this end of the field is... Uh, well, it's been all red, but you it can't go been. wrong with that. But Carthage has got the red, most of it on tonight. Uh, as JD, same colors, wearing white. But Grimm, number five, no goals yet. But boy, he causes a lot of problems. Grimm able to get rid of it to Dustin Makich. And now back to Grimm as he touches in. Gets a little pick, lost the ball. Trying to split the defenders. Thomas Grimm, though, picks up the ground ball as it was loose. And we go under three minutes in this first quarter. And JD has had the ball for maybe a minute. I guess the best news for the Red Rams is they're only trailing by two goals here. Just one shot so far. Thomas Grimm makes it three. The freshman circling around from behind. A kid who had 60 plus points as an eighth grader last year. 68 last year and 118 now this year's 58th goal of the year. You saw him get the separation, the step. As soon as you get a step, and he got a step on to Dario, and he turned on the Jets, and you got a slide to him, but he was so quick, he got in, and 
put the ball down. So it's just an isolation move from the back. When he gets separation, he turns on the Jets and put the ball in the goal. And now the Red Rams really would love to uh, get this face off. Try to get a little offense before the end of the quarter here. Thomas Grimm gets his 58th, the face-off win for Mulvaney. And the Comets once again working on offense. And at some point, uh, JD's going to get a little frustrated. I think Jamie Archer's already there. Yeah, it's tough when uh, not only are you, uh, you know, losing by three, but they're getting all the face-offs. Coster trying to Well, there's two guys way Neese. back there. Is, yeah, Nice couldn't do it. Thomas Grimm over trying to pick up the ground ball. Nice gives him a shove, but Coster got it. And now Robert Grimm got himself free and shot it wide. And Thomas Grimm uh, may have a shot at Casey Powell's all-time state-leading scoring mark. 553 <laughs> career points. <laughs> That's just amazing. insane, and he only had 90 after his freshman year. You talk about Grimm, he's got 118 this year, 68 last year, so he's got 186. And counting in only his freshman season. So he'll have a shot, but it's quite a scoring pace to keep up with. Just saw the ground balls there, five to one, and that's coming off the face-offs. Mostly they are getting the ground balls off the face-offs. Face-off man and the wingman are oftentimes the guys with the most ground balls for the team. And right now it has been all Carthage in terms of time. I, now they're going to warn them for stalling, so they're going to have to keep it in. Mulvaney muscles in, spins and shoots it high. And hurrying back to back it up is Paroli. So the Comets will retain possession with 104 left in the first quarter. A quick moving quarter. Completely controlled by Carthage. Thomas Grimm gives it up in the first mistake by Carthage as Grimm's pass is and the sails anyway toward the JD sidelines and the Red Rams will have it. Now John Clark brings it in and the Red Rams a rare offensive chance here in the final minute. Carthage, good size. Midfielders in defense. And a long bus ride down here from the North Country for Carthage for Janesville DeWitt. Yeah. About a 15 minute jaunt over from it's a drive their own turf. That's right. Depending on if you hit the lights or not. Well, right in the slot. Number 11 for JD. Sierra was open, but they couldn't handle the pass and it's going to be a turnover and with 16.8 left in this quarter it's going to be Carthage clearing so and just one shot on net for the Red Rams on a very limited offensive opportunity here in the first quarter Let's see, if, you know, see if the Comets try and race it upfield I just said they look like they're going to take the time Gable was calling directions out the goalie I don't think they're going to force it. They're going to go in with a 3 nothing lead here at this quarter unless they can get a shot off. But they certainly got two sticks on it, didn't they? Couldn't bring in the twice. pass. Sails out of bounds. And the first quarter comes to an end. The Carthage Comets, the second seed, looking to take down the defending champs up three after one. Time Warner Sports coverage of the Section 3 Boys Lacrosse Championships continues tomorrow night with the Boys Class A Final. The West Genesee Wildcats, six-time defending champs against the Auburn Maroons. 7.30 start tomorrow night from right here at Coin Field, right here at Time Warner Sports. And a national champion in our midst, Mike, or <laughs> Mike Abbott. His brother was Mike. That's Matt Abbott. Played for the Syracuse Orange, just a... What, seven, eight days ago? Nine. Sitting with his mom there, Lori. Won a yeah. national championship. His dad's out on the field officiating. He's there with his mom. And his brother Mike, of course, a national champion. Face-off, six ground balls. You can see four face-offs, six ground balls. That's mostly off the face-off, and you're going to get another one right here, and it's going to go Carthage. How about two national champions in the same family, huh? Mike Abbott from SUNY Cortland and 
Matt Abbott from the orange. And Dan Leitka down in between the uh, benches. Hey, thanks, Mark. Uh, report from both huddles. James will do it there at the break. Coach Archer just talked about, hey, the first period's over. Get that quarter out of our system. We have to stop giving away the first quarter. Start playing your game. Start getting ground balls. Let's start attacking. Other sideline, it was common. Cool. Let's keep beating them six on six. And defensively, we have to watch the back side of the crease. Back upstairs, guys. All right, the Red Rams now in trouble. That's going to be off Kicked of out of Rams. bounds off J.D. And it'll go back to Carthage. As little as they're touching the ball, they really uh, would be uh, best served to take care of that ball a little bit. But Comets are forcing that one. Ball security uh, has not been the strong suit so far. And Carthage has been able to sneak people out. We've had... Number three, Paroli open on the crease. He hasn't been able to push it in, but uh, the crease has been open on a number of occasions as they touch in and get ready to see if they can add to the three goal lead. Comets looking for their sixth sectional championship here tonight. James Wit going for number 10. Much like the uh, SU lacrosse team winning its 10th national crown 10 days ago out in Foxborough. And they both have been in the hunt here in the last decade or so. Each has won three times. Jamesville with three of the last five. In all the odd years, Robert Grimm spins and scores. Tough guy to mark up one on one. Grimm finally got free, and it's 4 nothing Comets. Yeah, they'll take that ball behind the crease, and they'll give it to Grimm and just say, you know what, just do what you do best. Goalie has to move, takes him going from side to side, brought him back inside pipe, and Grimm hit it, raising his point total, and it's got 121. Leading score in the section, obviously. And another face-off win for the Comets. Ground ball scooped up by Dave Gallagher, whose mom, Sue, is the uh, girls head coach. And the Carthage girls also sectional champions again this year. And they've also won a uh, state playoff game already. So they're into the quarterfinals this weekend. Four nothing Comets. JT has to feel like they barely even touched the ball so far. Pace has been uh, perfect for Carthage. They they like to run, but you know what? They've been very patient. You can see what they're doing, and they'll get that one-on-one -on -one from behind the cage like they did with Grimm. They get the matchups they want, and then they'll push it. Otherwise, they're just going to set it until they get everybody in the position they want, taking their time. Goster muscles in. Big save made by Jorgensen, and they're going to need him to be very large tonight if uh, the Comets keep up this possession dominance. I know we don't have height and weight in these. How big is Coster? He's a big kid. He is big. I think he's, well, let's check out their height and weight roster as the Red Rams have one sale high. They list him at 6'2", about 188, but might be a little bit. He, he plays bigger than that. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, nice look inside. Ground ball pickup by Nick Marshall. And now the Red Rams looking to make the most of this opportunity. Jake Braytek, 44 goals for the sophomore, gives it up. Marshall shot it just wide. Nice look, had a pass inside, couldn't convert, but JD's getting some rushes at the goal, and they're holding on to the ball. They'll be back, it's just a matter of time. But their offensive legs. Well, the Red Rams again coming off a one goal win over Cortland in the semifinals and talking to Coach Archer about how he felt about that. Well, he said you can look at it two ways. We didn't play our best game, but we still found a way to win. Or, you know, we're not playing as well as we can play right now at the point in the season where you want to be peaking. So they got by the uh, Purple Tigers after blowing them out twice in the regular season. And now off to a slow start here against Carthage, but I'm not so sure you can say it's a JD off to a flat start as much as Carthage has just been controlling 
the ball so well, far. Well, it starts at the X, and they've been getting all of them at the X. Uh, Vetter had a nice shot there on a long sweep, but uh, right now they've controlled it. And they've got to take solace in the fact that they are getting their legs back together and getting some shots off. And here's Mike Edwards, leading scorer we mentioned in the open. Edwards trying to feed in front. Ball picked up on the deflection, and now scooped up once again. It's Braytek. Good, good ground ball. That's why those are important. He gives his team another offensive life. Great pickup. Number four, Jack, Jake Braytek, only a sophomore. 44 goals. Played for the Red Rams as a freshman last year, and one of those sophomores that Coach Archer says has really stepped up. He mentioned Braytek, Kefis, and Sierra, three guys that have really come on here and helped the Red Rams get back to this point. DeJohn came around from behind, and Gable made the save. Shut down the near side. And Kyle with his older brother Ben in the stands here tonight. Clearing pass, though, is taken back by the Red Rams on a hop. Boy, they're doubling the ball. They really get on you quickly. They'll slide to you, Carthage. And uh, that was Jeff Better trying to muscle in moments ago. Now, Braytex shot never got in there. Deflected in front, picked up by the Comets. Time out. Quick timeout called by Kirk Venequatro to save the possession. And there's Coach Venequatro, whose uh, son Mario is going on to play for Ohio State. And they, of course, they pulled off the uh, big upset over Cornell in the uh, NCAA playoffs this year. He's also got his son Tony on his bench. And Jamie Archer on the other side uh, trying to get his guys going. I think Venequatro got that goal against Duke, right? Isn't that the... the, the believe he did, yep. The first he one. Actually led him in uh, man-up goals this year, Mario. Coach Archer uh, lost 18 seniors and seven starters from last year's team. And uh, this is a club that started out losing two of its first three games, but has now won 16 in a row. They've gotten the right guys in the right spot. And we are star watching out here. There's Steve Bevel, head coach for the SUNY Cortland Red Dragons, watching uh, both Kyle Gable and Mulvaney, who are both coming to play for him next year. And perhaps others. As they break the huddles, let's uh, once again check in with Dan Lipka. Thanks, Mark. I've been at this a little while, but I heard Coach Benequatro, one of the best quotes I've ever heard. He said, this is going to take a man's effort. Kids look at the scoreboard, men play to the horn, and that was his message in the timeout. You could write a book some of the things he comes up with. Keep that uh, pedal to the metal there, up 4 nothing, but doesn't want to see any let up here. And uh, I mentioned... Coach Venequatro not only has his son on his coaching staff, but also his cousin, Kevin Cook, who's been on the staff for five years, and a very special story there, and even more motivation to win. And again, we'll uh, check in on Kevin as we go along here. Almost midway through the second quarter. Thomas Grimm could not get it across midfield in time, and the Comets give it up. And a quick restart. JD's got a chance, got some numbers. Oh, good oh, save. Did John try to get it off and believe his stick was checked. Gable made the save though anyway. Kehoe takes a shot high, that drew a flag. As the Comets got it across midfield and they'll go a man up here. And the ball hits the ground. Thing smart here is now take your time, get a good shot up. You know you're gonna get a minute. And that's a, that's a tough one. You got a chance to put two in. Oh, there. Mulvaney turns and scores. Inside roll for Zach Mulvaney. His second of the night. And again, to add insult to injury, they'll go a man up now. That's what I was saying. You know what? You want to make sure you get a good shot off. And he takes Nice and then brings him back on the inside roll and goes high. There's the inside roll. No help. Goalies help less. Couldn't do anything about that. But what that does now, and then it gives you this, this man up opportunity uh, if you get the face off, and they, that's what they have been doing. So uh, it really puts a lot of pressure on it. Five nothing now in the game going by quickly. So the uh, face off X becomes ever more important, and this one's going to go to JD. Good job by Braytech. 
and much needed for the Red Rams who now trail by five goals and are a man down for the next 50 seconds. A tough place to mount a comeback from here. As they'll wait for help to arrive and things to even up a little bit. Now they're doubling the ball. It, it took them a while to. Bray Tech takes that away from Dave Gallagher. Now Gallagher nice. chases it to the end line and forced the turnover. Nice job. Dave Gallagher, the kind of uh, defenseman that other players fear, says Coach Venequatro, at least up in the North Country. Well, he's got seven goals, two and two assists. Here come the Comets again. Man up for another 10 seconds. But not forcing anything. Grim to Grim. Robert from out top. Save made by Jorgensen. Scoops it right up as Thomas was looking for a little rebound. Jorgensen uh, had saw that the whole way. That was the key there. It was to his low right, and he got it. Right now, J.D. trying to get a something going. Now they're going to get a penalty. John Clark got it across midfield and drew a flag. Now Clark takes it home and scores! John Clark. A little determination in that drive to the net. And the Red Rams finally have their first goal of the game, and they'll also get the penalty. That was just a bull dodge. Good, good balance by Clark. And he just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. Got, gets inside that one-hand check and bounces it in. And one thing, you know, when you see this, people love this surface because you get a heck of a bounce off this surface. You can pick up speed on this surface when you, when you take a bounce shot. So you'll see a lot more bounce shots here than perhaps you would on a dirt field. Well, it took 22 minutes, but the Red Rams are on the board. Now Robert Grimm trying to answer with his team a man down. Grimm to the cage. Oh, he shot it just wide. Got a backup, though. Nice Paroli backup. again. Paroli, one of those guys who's causing JD some problems. He hasn't put one in yet, but he's been open on the crease. That time he did a nice job of backing up right now. Carthage getting ready to start over again. Now they're going to double this ball. Tejo just trying to kill a little clock here. A four goal lead with under four to play in the first half for Carthage as they score the first five of this one. Still 15 seconds left in this man up. Tejo, the one man penalty kill here. Yeah. We might need a little uh, water break after this run. And the Comets will call timeout to, again, save the possession and uh, save poor Derek Kehoe. Did a good job of running that penalty off. He's got to be tired. they got to get him out here. Come on. Yeah. They're going to tell him, Derek, heck of a job. Grab some rest. All right. So timeout uh, out on the field there as the Comets and the uh, Red Rams huddle. 3.38 to go in the first half. And take a look right in the middle of the huddle. There is Kevin Cook, uh, Down syndrome, 48 years old, the cousin of head coach Kirk Venequato right there. But Kevin thinks of himself as the head coach, said Kirk. And uh, <laughs> says he just gets such a kick out of being on the sideline with the guys. And he also uh, mans the sidelines for the football team. And, boy, if they lose, he said, you'll see Kevin face down on the ground crying. So you do not want to see a grown man cry and so that's an even more motivation more incentive. for the Comets to win. And a great story there. He said he's been with them five years. He wished he would have asked him to join him earlier, but really enjoys it. And uh, Kevin, uh, certainly an inspirational part of that uh, Carthage sideline. He also loves to see himself on TV. So Good. Well, we got, got him, him in on. there. <laughs> Dan Leedka likes to see himself on TV every now and then. Let's hear from him. Hey, thanks, Mark. From the JD sideline, coach said, hey, we broke the seal. Let's get on a roll. He said defensively, they're going for a lot of the slashes in the middle of the field. They're losing their position, and they're giving up the middle of the field. He wants to see them slide their feet and maintain their position instead of rolling the dice and going for the big slash. Back upstairs, guys. 
Yeah, All right. lacrosse is a game you got to move your feet. If you're not moving your feet, you're getting beat is basically how it goes. So, yeah, you don't want to give the big hit. you got to move your feet, stay with them, play body position. Now, they've tried this uh, this one-on-one -on -one from behind with the inside roll. It's worked a couple times, but Lee's worked it loose. Coster picked it up and shot it off the side of the net. No. And a hold going to be called against Carthage, so the Red Rams will get it. And then a chance to uh, chip into that lead again here. 314 to go in the first half. It's a nice play by Nice to get the ball out. And then thought it gave up a goal, but they were holding. And now the clearing is on JD. And they get it across midfield. Timeout JD, I assume. Yep. Red Rams call time with 2.55 to go. And would very much like to score another goal or two here before the half. First time they met two weeks ago was 11-10 JD. So Carthage has uh, really turned the tables here, at least in the first half. Well, boys lacrosse tonight and girls lacrosse coming your way a week from Saturday at the state championships as Time Warner Sports continues our coverage. June 14th, live from the campus of SUNY Cortland. Coverage begins at 9.30 in the morning. So get up early with us a week from Saturday for state championship girls lacrosse here on Time Warner Sports. J.D. Red Rams state champions last year. They won the state title up at Cicero North Syracuse High School. And we'll look to defend that crown if they can mount a comeback here. State championships for boys lacrosse down at Hofstra University this year. And a pretty good rivalry has developed here between these two programs. Well, two you see some teams better programs in the I, state. I'm right? just going to say, yeah, but you've seen in the, at the level, there's not a lot of b these the B schools, but they're getting better. If Fulton uh, has got a program that's it's getting better, so hopefully the competition will will be there. Right now, these are the two class teams from Central New York, and obviously two of the better teams in the state. A shot on net, deflected, and finally picked up by Gable. East Syracuse Manoa, another yep. up and comer in the Class B's. Well, right now it's battle of the big boys here. James Wildewitt, Carthage, Thomas Grimm thought the better of it and backs it out. Thomas had been in complete control since the opening faceoff here. 4-0 lead after the first quarter, or 3-0 rather. Now Grimp, big shot saved by Jorgensen. And maybe an early shot, maybe a little earlier than they wanted. That'll give JD a chance. Just under two minutes to go in the half. Nice. Trying to run, they want to run. Didn't quite have the numbers. Defense closing quickly. Shot bouncing toward the net. Gable picks it up. John Clark couldn't really get the shot off. He was swarmed under by the Comets. Coming back the other way, Nate Coster, younger brother of Ben. He grabs it for the clear, and now the Comets will set up another offensive attack. Both Grimm brothers have scored. Mulvaney has two. And Coster the other for Carthage. You like that inside roll. Oh my goodness, the athleticism for Robert Grimm. And it's going to count. Left his feet and scored his second of the night with just under a minute to go. Just watch this. Well, there's just a back inside roll. Gets pushed. See, they're going to say he was pushed in the crease because you're not supposed to end up in the crease, but they're saying that he was assisted in there. Three more points for Grimm, who's now at 122 for the season. 59th goal of the year, second of the night. Five-goal lead restored for Carthage, and a pretty important face-off. One by the Red Rams. Braytech picks it up. 
Well, they've solved that little problem, at, at JD getting some face-offs, but boy, those uh, those one-on-ones and the inside rolls have hurt them. But they've got 40 seconds left to see if they can't pull within four. Get your two timeouts and half, you might as well use them, and JD does. Tom Abbott signals timeout. Carthage Comets scored in the first minute of the half and the final minute of the half as well. And a 6-1 advantage. Janesville DeWitt. They've uh, touched the ball at least a little bit more in the second quarter, but to this point have not been able to uh, turn that into a lot of goals so far. Major League Lacrosse coming your way this Friday night. The Boston Cannons and the New Jersey Pride will meet for the second time this year. And you can see it right here on Time Warner Sports Friday night at 7.30. Well, that says Rochester and Washington. My copy says Boston, New Jersey. Either way, it's Major League Lacrosse. Yeah, you know what? Coming you, up. It's going to be exciting no matter who plays. Well, you know what? And there's so many former Syracuse players. Yeah, you can't miss. Or in that league. Yep. Uh, I believe yeah, Boston, I believe Mikey Powell is still on the Boston Cannons roster. Now Rochester featuring uh, several former Syracuse players, Brett Bucktooth, Casey Powell. And uh, it's always a good time to see those guys. Of course, Mike Lavelle, the uh, Syracuse star from this year. Chicago, the right? Major League Lacrosse Rookie of the Week after his first game with the Chicago Machine. I was talking to Eric Pittard in the game before, who's also playing for Chicago, and he said it was a real addition, a real to get a true attack, Ben. And of course, they uh, they also got Stephen Brooks. I was going to say they got the fire from outside. On the rebound, the shot is wide, taken by Sierra. And I've been told it is Rochester, Washington, not Boston, New Jersey. So Rochester on your screen this Friday night. Shot, Hook Gable Holy moly. makes the save on the low laser. Mark Kiefus put the shot on net. Gable up to the challenge. Final seconds of the half. One more shot and another save by Gable at the horn. Impressive in the last 10 seconds for Gable. Big momentum boost right there and a deflation for the J.D. Red Rams, who got a couple of good shots in the final minute. But Kyle Gable did not allow one to go past. So at the half, it's a 6-1 lead for the Comets. And Dan Lika is with the coach that's got the lead so far. Hey, thanks, Mark. Coach, uh, great couple of stops there by your goaltender. Did you think at halftime, how happy would you be just allowing the one goal. Well, I'm just glad to be in the ball game with JD. You know, and my kids got to continue to give them the respect they deserve. JD's capable of coming back and putting 12 on us. So, you know, we just got to keep doing what we're doing: control the faceoffs, ground balls, and patience on offense. A dominant in time of possession. How are you able to do that? Well, we just got good sticks out there. Kids playing with their brains right now. We'll find out if they can play with their brains for uh, you know the second half. Best of luck. Thank you. Back upstairs, guys. Important thing to have: your brain, and they're playing with them so far. And the smart money is on the Comets at this point, 6-1 at the half. And welcome back to Coin Stadium. We're at halftime. Carthage leads James Vildewitt 6-1. I'm joined here at halftime. Lemoyne head coach, Dan Sheen, we appreciate you taking the time to join us here tonight. Great season. You came up a game short, but your program is really on a roll. Talk to us about that. Well, we had a, we had a great year. Um, you know, it, it's, it was a little disappointing ending the season on a loss. Um, but after we've had a, a couple of weeks to, to reflect back on the season, I, I thought our kids, uh, especially our senior class, to go out the way that they, uh, the way they did in their career with 64 and 5 uh, just says an awful lot of, about the talent, um, not only in our senior class, but on our roster from top to bottom and, and just where our program's at. You guys have a phenomenal program, but your facilities are being talked about perhaps to be upgraded. Where does that stand, and what will that do to your program, and how will that help you? Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting really close uh, to building a, a very nice um, multi-surface facility. Um, we are right now, we're just working with the town of DeWitt to get final approval on that, and as soon as that comes through, the, uh, my boss, Matt Bassett, says that the trucks will be ready to roll. 
Uh, so we're looking, we're looking forward to that. And and you know, I, one of the things that our president John Smirley has been saying is that our, our kids are champions in the classroom. Our kids are champions, um, you know, w with lacrosse and and uh, what we're doing by building this new facility is we're going to give our kids the, the the facility that they deserve. Um, so we've we've waited a while, but uh, I think we're pretty darn close. Well, we're kind of spoiled here in Central New York with the level of lacrosse. How does this area compare to other parts of the country? Um, you know, I, I think I think talent-wise, uh, athletic-wise, there's a lot of places that are, are very similar to Central New York. But it seems like it seems like the the, the knowledge of uh, at the high school level here in Central New York is is it's absolutely fantastic and I think that says an awful lot about the the coaching that goes on at the high school level um, it, it's it's a pleasure for me to recruit this area and, and to be able to bring these kids in and uh, and kind of have fun of fun with them they, they have an awful lot of talent uh, they bring an awful lot with them when they get to us and and we just try to build on that coach we appreciate you taking the time to join us best of luck hope to see the Dolphins down the road sounds good thanks a lot for having me we're at halftime here at Coin Stadium. Carthage leads Jamesville DeWitt 6 to 1. Coach Gallagher in the house supporting the Carthage boys. Dale and Mark will break it down right after this on Time Warner Sports. Halftime of the Class B Championship. Carthage with a controlling five goal lead over the defending champion, JD Red Ramps. What will the second half hold? Find out when we come back. And welcome back to Coyne Stadium, still at halftime. About to face off here with Coach Archer. Coach, uh, Carthage really controlled the ball in the first half. You guys have a lot of weapons and are very capable. What can you do to get your scores, the ball here in the second half? Well, the thing is, is we are capable. It's just a matter of uh, making plays. These guys are getting to the ground balls. They're beating us everywhere on the field. And once they get a lead, they like to milk the clock. So we uh, we got to get the ground balls and not let them do that. Thanks, Coach. Go get them. Yeah, thanks. Back upstairs. All right, very simple. Just got to get the ground balls, got to get the face-offs and uh, give yourself an opportunity here. And he's right, they do like to milk the clock, and especially with a five-goal lead. They call it being patient, but it allows them being patient or milking the clock, but it gives you time to take just the perfect shot. Uh, and then what it does is it forces them to come out and play defense, and then you get penalties and so on. So let's see if J.D. can start out with the face-off. They had got the last couple. Let's see if they can do it again. Well, the uh, Comets really have been patient from the opening possession. Let's see if they can continue that here as Paroli backs it out on the break and throws it away. And it was picked off by the Red Rams, Jeff Vetter. But on the they were in the crease, crease violation, yeah, so it'll go back to JD anyhow. Yeah, but they just get a move it on the side. Now Vetter, whose older brother Keith Vetter, played for a dance scene in the Lemoyne Dolphins. In these past years, gives it up to Braytech, cross midfield, and you know, here's another thing. The Red Rams did have some opportunities at the end of the half. But Kyle Gable was there. Oh, he got lucky there. Got the post that time as Braytech broke free. I think it hit a post in the crossbar. That was a double piper. Almost a quick goal for JD. And one they could very much have used. Yeah, just a, the right prescription, right? Just what the doc ordered, but they still got the ball. And it, it looks like a little isolation behind as they get five people standing out on top. And now they break. Better on Robert Grimp. Not going to really get much room on Robert. But it is a short stick behind, which is what uh, one of the things you like to do. Get that short stick back there, and that gives you more room to operate. That'll be Cameron Stone inbounding. A sophomore attack for Jamesville DeWitt. Run, David, run! Cut him off, David. Stone on Gallagher. Feeds it, and a shot taken by DeJohn. Bounces over the cage. And backed up there by Mike Edwards. Hey, 
Edwards trying to back in. Held off by Jamie Grimm. Robert Grimm picks up the ground ball. Turnover JD. Grimm all the way down the field. Full speed. Coster shoots and Jorgensen got in the way. Thomas Grimm picks up the rebound. Draws the flag as the ball comes loose. And the Comets will go up a man. Jared Neese guilty of the penalty. So the Red Rams had the possession for the opening two minutes of the quarter. Could not convert. And now they'll go a man down. It is not Jared Neese. In fact, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. He said 3-6. That's what I thought he said. Yep, you're right. So Nice into the penalty box for 30 seconds. Right. 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 Cage, Thomas Grimm feeds to Paroli. Couldn't handle the pass. And he was wide open. Now the other way. Checked loose by Kehoe. As the Red Rams had it. Mulvaney. To Paroli, back out front, Coster, big save, Jorgensen. Alex Jorgensen trying to keep the Red Rams in it. Boy, he did a nice job, didn't he? They're even. Now Thomas Grimm backs it out. Coster right in front. Denied by Jorgensen, and now Coster wants another chance. Gives it up. And Carthage again, looking very patient. And as Jamie Archer mentioned, they will be very patient here with a five-goal lead. Inside they go, score! Thomas Grimm on the doorstep. He can be patient, and then when the opportunity arises, you got to answer the call, and Thomas Grimm did his second of the night. And a six-goal lead for the Comets. Yeah, Thomas Grimm is going to just kind of Sneak inside, and right there, they, they left him on goal line extended. He got the ball. Watch him get the ball right there, and they're trying to slide to him, but they let him alone. Obviously, you're watching the ball. You've got to watch the guy that you're guarding, and Grimm snuck in and gets goal number seven. Now the battle for the faceoff. Mulvaney and Braytek both hitting the turf. Actually, it's not Braytek in there. It's John Clark instead, and the Red Rams able to win it. Now Clark on the run. Big shot out top and a score. Quick answer for Cameron Stone. And the sophomore only his ninth goal of the season. And the Red Rams are back to within five. Looping pass inside. Now they're looking for Stone. Drops it back. A little back pass and Stone's got the as they slid over to the ball, Cameron Stone was open and put in goal number two. Well, less than 10 seconds for Red Rams to answer the Carthage goal, but still trailing by five with Carthage back in possession of the ball. Eight minutes left in the third quarter. Got to watch the <coughs> Grimm there. He sneaks up. Ball down. Nice strip. It was Alex Michaelenko knocking it loose from Ben Coster. Now the ball still being fought for. Picked up again by the Red Rams. Liebman ahead to Joe D'Addario on the break again. Big windup and a shot from out top by Edwards goes in. Back to back goals by the Red Rams. Halfway through the third quarter, a little momentum boost for J.D. Yeah, I got the fast break. Looking, look, just taking him. Goalie, got to say to himself, oh my gosh, I should have seen that. Gable, straight on shot, saw it the whole way, but they went stick high, offside. And Edwards beat Gable. 59th goal of the season for Mike Edwards. And once again, Robert Grimm. A face-off win for Carthage to try and quell the rebellion. <laughs> good, good, 
Good choice of words there. Right now, they're going to take the time and get Coster involved. What now you want to do is if you're if you're Carthage, just say we just got to match a match of goal for goal. We got a four goal cushion. And let's be patient and not take bad shots and give them an opportunity. Interesting. Uh, Coach Venequatro has the ball checked loose by Nice. Mulvaney lost his footing and he'll go back to JD. Coach Venequatro was telling me earlier today that he thought they still hadn't really solved their patience issue. It was a problem for them, he said, against Jamesville DeWitt. And they'd only played twice since then in the last 16 days. And it looked like they had it solved in the first half, but Mulvaney maybe a little unnecessarily controlling the ball. And now Braytek faked the shot, went inside and lost it. And it goes right back to the Comets. Will they be patient here? Paroli back out to Grimm. Left-handed shot and a rocket goes in. And he also drew a flag, came down late as Robert Grimm got taken down. Robert Grimm has his third goal of the game and a five-goal lead again for Carthage. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, he's just kind of a trailer, but they know, they suspect he's going to be there. They just jump him. He changes from right to left. Watch. Now he's got a left-handed shot and zips it, and there's a late hit right there. So that's going to cost him illegal hit. It's going to cost him a minute. Well, just when the Red Rams had a little momentum, had cut it to four and had the ball, Robert Grimm comes down, scores his third of the game, and also a man-up opportunity for a minute. Big face-off win for Jake Braytek. Although his pass after he won the faceoff is intercepted. On the bounce, Thomas Grimm. And now the Comets will look to restore their six goal advantage. Grimm to Coster got a check loose. Michaelenko again. Got to watch Paroli. He, he's had a number of opportunities. He hasn't hit one yet, but he's been open. Grim to Paroli, couldn't handle it. Deflected it toward the net and Jorgensen able to scoop it up. Zero for two, zero for three. Nobody really making much of a dent on the uh, extra man opportunities. Mark Kiefus across midfield for Jamesville to whip. Boy, he ripped a shot just before the end of the first half, didn't he? Didn't and go in. Bullet. It bounced and Gable got piece of it, sent it over the crossbar for the save. Oh, John just took a whack from Gallagher. Now left his foot, or his, lost his footing rather, and it'll stay with JD as the pushing penalty called. Not penalty, but infraction. That pass right to the middle. Yeah, that's tough to up. feed that middle. Vinny Cesario is there for Carthage to break it up. And out of the other way, Pat Gibbons. Nice clear. Nice job by number 30. Did a nice job, Gibbons. Look at the ground ball numbers for the Comets. Yeah, 22-10. Now a shove from behind by Dario. That's going to draw a flag. And they will have the Comets a man up once again with 4.45 to go in the third. And the Red Rams looking a little frustrated at this point. There's Dario right there. Yeah, that's definitely... If they, yeah. <laughs> Just in case they didn't see it the I don't, I don't know first what the fans are complaining time. about. Yeah, it was definitely a push the first two times he did it. The rule actually is if they push you in a direction you don't want to go, you don't have to be fall down. Now that's going to be thrown away. So they do capitalize on a poor play by Carthage, and JD will get the ball back as they sit for 30. Paroli's pass to Thomas Grimm a little low, and Grimm trying to recover. Threw it wide of his intended target and out of bounds. And Jeff Vetter trying to get past Grimm. Does so, but now wary of the trail check. And able to get it into the zone for the Red Rams. We'll be back to even strength in another few seconds. You know, Grimm doesn't get a lot of time to rest. Did you notice that? And uh, he, plays, uh, he plays good defense and plays good offense. He's... Uh, Number five doing a nice job. Yeah. 
And three goals on the night for Robert Grimm. Closing in on 360 career points. Trying to come around from behind and shoot was John Clark, but the ball kind of hung in his stick. Threw it into the ground and then it goes out of bounds. Over to Carthage. Three forty-five left, five goal lead for Carthage. The lead was also five at halftime. JD had uh, cut it down to four a few minutes back, but then Grimm answered with his third of the night. Perfect pass. What a catch by Thomas Grimm. On the run, little bounce pass. Mulvaney, Coster out top. And now Grimm will back it out to his older brother, Robert. That was uh, Jamie Grimm. That was just a nice, nice pass, number 25 on the defensive end. Let's see where this ball down. Ground ball, if it goes the way the statistics are, it should be Carthage. Not this time. Picked up by the Red Rams. The Liebman on the run. Can he get to midfield? Found his man. Jared Knowles gets it into the zone. Now Vetter. A little hesitation. They feed the doorstep to John off the post. Off the near iron. It bounced right back to him. Pass to the goalie. Intercepted though by J.D. Edwards over there causing trouble. Tries to feed out top. And the pass too tough to handle for Stone. Red Rams though have the ball back. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. Nice look. They feed it right down in front and the pass got away. Picked up though by the Red Rams on the far side by Eric DeJohn. Now Jeff Vetter will set it up from behind the cage. Being watched by Big Ben Coster. Vetter feeds it down low. Gable made the save point blank. Denies Jake Braytek. You know what he did? He watched his stick. His stick was high. He matched him stick to stick and got the save. They had a shorty behind. They beat him on the run from behind, but a great save by Gable. And now, too much time taken by the Comets. They give it right back to J.D. with a minute and a half to play in the quarter. J.D. could use a goal here to come within four before this half. They got a lot of time. Shot. Stays low J.D. bullet for John Clark, backed up by Cameron Stone. Each team has scored twice in the quarter. Behind the backer by Braytek, also saved by Gable. Now Derek Kehoe will look to get it across the midfield line. Oh, Tough man. pass, but what a catch. Zach Mulvaney made that look pretty easy, and it wasn't. Yeah, Mulvaney, that almost hit the carpet. His stick was just under it. What a pickup. Saved another JD offensive opportunity. And now they're going to take some time off here. 45 seconds, let people rest. Grim back, and they gave him a little bit of a rest. And a goal here for Carthage would really be a backbreaker heading to the fourth. Mulvaney tries the inside roll, shut down. Good job defensively by Jeff Vetter. Now Robert Grim will work on Joe Dario. Tough matchup. Dario stays with him, knocks him off his feet. Now Grim gets free. Feeds the far side. Coster wheels and scores with under 10 seconds left in the quarter. Big goal for the Comets, and they're up by six. I'll tell you what, give Robert Grimm a lot of credit. He was getting beat up, and he said, you know what, I get free. I'm going to make the pass. Nice move. Watch your move. Take a left and then come around right. A little jump shot and a great finish on that play by Ben Coster. Second goal tonight, but a nice look and a nice assist by Robert Grimm, number five, after he was really getting beat back there. 
And they've scored in the final minute of the quarter for the second straight quarter. And the Red Rams answer, final seconds. Still has it. Pass goes awry and the quarter comes to an end. So the Carthage Comets, 12 minutes away from their first sectional title in six years, up by six on the defending champs. Time Warner Sports coverage of high school lacrosse is brought to you by the Sun Auto Warehouse in Cicero, the used car king. By GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by the Carbone Auto Group. Visit CarboneCars.com. That was a coal muffler game break for brakes, exhaust systems, or an oil change. Come on down to coal muffler and give your car a treat. Carthage Comets took control of this one in the first quarter and have not really let up as you look at numbers through three quarters. Ground ball almost double for Carthage. And the faceoffs are double, and they've got a six goal lead. And as we begin the fourth quarter, let's Check in again with Dan Leitka downstairs. Hey, thanks, Mark. Uh, both sidelines first for J.D. Coach talked about it's time to start making some plays, clean up the passing, take and look what the defense gives you and capitalize on it. He feels like they're squandering their opportunities on the other sideline. Coach Benacuatro said the double teams are going to start coming. Make sure you keep the guy on your hip and push them out and make the smart pass. Back upstairs. They always tell you to make the easy pass because you're right down by six goals. Uh, they got to start really kind of taking some chances. Now there's an unforced error, one of those things that uh, happens, drives you crazy. And right now, JD is gonna get an opportunity to convert maybe into an offensive thrust and get another goal. They need one right now. Well, the Red Rams have had their opportunities to get back in this game and have not been able to take advantage. Let's see if they can this time. and. Start chipping away here. It's just three goals in the first three quarters for the Red Rams. He scored 11 on Carthage just 16 days ago. Oh, good save. Another big save for Gable. As the midfielder John Clark broke in free once again, and Gable just stood his ground and made the save. Boy, they've done a nice job of clearing. I know I realize they had some problems with that, I guess, in their first game against JD, but boy, they've done a nice job of clearing the ball. Carthage has, and they are going to note the clock or be extremely patient, depending on how you look at it. Seven saves in the game for Gable with his hero watching from the stands, his older brother, Ben Gable. And they're talking to Coach Venequatro about any similarities. He said they couldn't be more different Thomas Grimm looking for the hat trick, wheeled around from behind, and Alex Jorgensen made the save. He said Ben Gable was a great athlete trapped in a big body, where uh, Kyle is a much smaller version. Here he comes again, can't make that save. On the break, it's Eric DeJohn. And the Red Rams have their fourth goal of the night. Almost two minutes into the fourth quarter, back within five. All came from a poor pass and catch. And a nice conversion, getting that ball back, getting it down on the break, and just able to put that ball in easily was Eric DeJohn, but it all came on a mistake by Carthage, and DeJohn finishes it off and gives him some life here in the fourth quarter. 30th goal of the season for the sophomore. And this one back within five. Red Rams will have it. And the JD fan section starting to try and pump some life into this team. Carthage scored the first five goals of this game, has been in charge since then. That feed out top, Braytech oh. winds up and scores. 
Nobody came out to check Jake Braytek. And he made him pay, and it's back within four with 9.45 to go. Braytek almost couldn't believe it that he was that open. Watch what he does when he gets the ball. He's going to take a step. I think I'll take another one. And he just rips it, stick side high, upper 90. But nobody, but nobody slid out to pick up Braytek. And what a terrific job. And it's going to be a timeout Carthage as they've seen their lead go from 9-3 to only 9-5. A lot of time left in this game. So sophomore stepping up for JD like they have all year to score two quick goals here in the fourth quarter. Jake Braytek scoring his 45th of the season and Eric DeJohn his 30th. And more boys lacrosse championship action coming your way tomorrow night from right here at Coin Field. The Class A final, West Genesee and Auburn, a 7.30 faceoff tomorrow, Thursday, June the 5th, right here on Time Warner Sports. And there is uh, Carthage coach, Kirk Vinicuatro and Kevin Cook, his assistant and his uh, cousin in there. Also listening in with great interest, a six goal lead has been trimmed to four here with 9.45 to play. Some momentum for the Red Rams who've been waiting all game to get things going. Well, and face -offs can get another face -off I was just going to say, face-offs become increasingly, increasingly important. Uh, something that they have done in spurts, but generally it's been Carthage controlling the faces and the ground balls. Well, they had double the ground balls, and in, that, in this particular game, that's a telling statistic. Now, right now, they're going to send Grimm out to face off, 11 to 6 in that. Carthage are controlling the X so far, 11 6. It's Braytek and Grimm. Oh, somebody moved, and they both moved. So it's Braytek and Grimm. Braytek scoops behind. Grimm saw it on the run. Picks it up. Fakes the shot, or the pass rather, and takes the shot high. And that certainly would have taken a lot of the wind out of the sails, but the Comets have it. They feed in front. Kehoe shoots. And the JD defense slow to react. And it's going to stay with Carthage. Now you can't be slow to react at this point in the game. You got a lot of goals to make up, and you got a team that says, you know what? We're going to be real patient. And Kirk Vinicuatro wants patience, but boy, if they're going to get open shots like that, you almost have to take oh, them. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I just think that you want to take the high percentage shot. Don't waste the opportunity with a poor shot. Mulvaney lost his man. Braytek came over to help out. Anytime you got a short stick inside, inside roll, oh. Jorgensen made the save, and now they battle for the loose ball. It's going to be a play on foul here. Jorgensen well out of the cage to try and pick up the ground ball. It's going to be JD's ball on a play on. Push. Tom Abbott made the call, I think, and that's going to be JD's opportunity. There's the push, and that's, let's, let's see what happens. That's why it's called play on. And Denies Mulvaney his third of the night. And now Braytek gets it across midfield. Well, he's played well, hasn't he? As he come along here in this second half, he's getting ready to take his... Feeds it oh. front off the crossbar right off the corner. The top corner, that was halfway in and came out. Now Braytek on the reload. Lost his footing and bounced it high. Oh, man, the Red Rams. How many pipes have they hit? I think they've had three or four pipes tonight. Look at that, right off that left upright. So still a four goal lead for Carthage by the narrowest of margins. Uh-oh, that's trouble. The John out top, Edwards bounced it high. Whoa, and the backup by Cameron Stone out there. Gable went down, ball bounced high. JD put a lot of pressure on. Red Rams feeling a little more confident here. Can they get another one? Braytek feeds down low to John. That might have hit the crossbar. And somehow it ended up in the stick of Kyle Gable. As we go under eight minutes, a little fly ball pass out to midfield, taken in by Thomas Grimm, and 
The Comets have, at least momentarily, held off the charge. J.D. outscoring Carthage here in the second half. But have not been closer than four. Rimp lost Braytech, shot it wide of the net. And Paroli with a backup. Didn't have the angle. Did for a minute, but see how much time they take off the clock. I think they got it at 7.35. That's 7.15. Let's see what happens before they turn it back or get a goal. JD's going to have to play very tight. Jared Neese against Zach Mulvaney. Robert Grimm on to Dario. Now top shot taken by Paroli on the hop. And the rebound picked up by Dario. Another quick shot taken by Carthage. And here come the Red Rams. Moving quickly. Nice catch to John on the run. Feeds it back. Now top pass is broken up by Grimm. That's just a... And now Mulvaney comes back to pick up the ball. He gets taken down, and Braytek picked up the ground ball. And not happy about the call. It's, he will be charged with a 30-second hold. On Zach Mulvaney, take another look here. Grimm, who, as I said, doesn't get a lot of rest. Looks like he's cramping up a little bit. Yeah, he, when he got knocked down there, he was a little, little trouble getting up. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell just by the way he's putting his foot down. He's got a cramp, and he's back in there. He's a tough kid. Man-up chance for Carthage. As they try to once and for all. They really need a goal here to keep put JD this away. down. Yeah. Halfway point of the quarter. And J.D. within four, as close as they've been since it was 4 nothing. Bounce shot is high. Paroli backs it up and picks it up. Grimm's pass out top, broken up. And picked up by Mulvaney. Even up. Mike Fiaco got a stick on that one. Now in the middle, Kehoe shoots it wide. Derek Kehoe, another youngster for Carthage. Paroli Kehoe, Thomas Grimm, all freshmen. Seeing significant playing time. They're gonna tell him, they're gonna warn him to keep it. Yep, just as I said that, they're all making the same sign. Stalling, you gotta keep it in. Thomas Grimm lost it, Nice knocked it loose, but Grimm able to pick it back up. Now gets it to his older brother, Robert. Inside Working roll. on Fiaco. Oh. Grimm comes around and scores with 5.02 to go, a five-goal lead as Grimm scores his fourth of the night. He is tough, boy. I tell you, he just comes around. He's been, he's been getting the tar beat out of him, but as soon as he gets a step, he just knows he can keep his hands free, and he waits for the last possible second. They got him up high, and he just, when the stick relaxes a second, you got to get underneath and lift his hands up. Easy for me to say. Robert Grimm, a heck of a player, comes up with his fourth. I guess he took care of that cramping problem, huh? Yeah, right. 61 goals and counting for Robert Grimm on the season. Six points tonight. Big faceoff win for J.D. as they're down five with under five to go now. Edwards takes the feed, could not get the shot off as it was just a little bit high from John Clark. Boy, both these teams have played full speed, rock em, sock em lacrosse. Big yes. shot and a goal from right out top. Jeff Sierra wound up and found the upper corner, and it's back to four with four and a half to go. Tells how important Grimm's goal was before this. But Sierra is going to get the ball. 
He's got, look at the space he's got, and then he just rips it, stick side, upper 90. You give them that space, they're gonna take the shot. And they're able to complete it, and Sierra brings them back within four. A quick answer, only about 30 seconds for JD to answer and cut it back to four. And now they've got to win virtually every face off. And As Grimm steps quickly. back in, yes. Yeah. Grimm and John Clark at the X. Grimm just kind of shovels it to the side and uses his speed. Feeds his brother Thomas and Paroli, and now they'll look to take some clock. Had a chance at a little fast break action there, but. Now they got to add a pole over there. They don't want him over there. They want to get Keo in. Number 40 comes, comes across. Really very close to stepping on the back line there. Yeah, he's very close to. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna warn him when they get it in again. I'm assuming they're gonna probably warn him. Dario and Thomas Grimm behind the cage. And Dario's doing a nice job short of getting a penalty of trying to get that ball away. Yeah. Now they've been told to keep it in once again with three and a half to go in the Class B championship game. Carthage has led throughout. Mulvaney to Paroli. Nice catch by yeah. the freshman just to retain Ooh. possession there. He just thought he was on the line. He, he was out of the box. Mulvaney caught it with his foot on the line. So it's a turnover with 3.20 to go. And JD has the ball back. And they cash it in. Nice catch. JD's been able to run this. They've been able to run and gun with him, and they haven't been able to force him into that six on six now. JD's going to unload. Clark nice shot. Out top. Fires it just high with 3.04 on the clock. John Clark scored the first James Wildewitt goal. And it came with about four and a half to go in the first half as they were kept off the clock for the first 22 minutes plus. Now the ball on the ground, and once again, the ground ball picked up by the Comets, but they throw it away at midfield. And this time, Neath has it. And the big stick crosses the midfield line, gets it ahead. Red Rams need a big rally here. Four goals in the final two and a half minutes. Can it be done? Clark. Low bullet, Gable went down for the save and now tries to trap the ball. Comes loose. And a push gonna be called against Carthage. But JD will keep it. That was a smart play though. Now they get the ball way back out, 20 yards out to the right. You don't want anybody picking the ball up in there, so you push them. You don't want to overcommit back there. Nice save. Gable goes low again. Timeout. And Gallagher had it in his stick. So Coach Venequatro calls timeout with exactly two minutes left and a 10-6 lead. And the Comets scored 10 goals on JD 16 days ago and lost by one. And now they're up by four with two minutes left as Kyle Gable into double figures and saves. And as we look at Kyle Gable, that's a hint. He might just be involved in our UPS save of the game brought to you by the UPS stores of Central New York. It's actually going to be his opponent, Alex Jorgensen, with a point blank save on Ben Coster. So Gable has 10 saves, but Alex Jorgensen is our UPS store save of the day honoree. I'll tell you what, both goalies have played well. They've they faced some brutal shooting. I mean, uh, J.D. For, was quiet for a while, but they came back and just at the end of the first half, Gable made some nice saves, but Jorgensen's been uh, under fire all night and done a nice job. So both goalies have, have played well. And Jorgensen, a guy who played in three or four games last year before a losing out on the uh, starting goalie spot. And again, uh, his coach did not expect as much as he's gotten out of Jorgensen this year. He said he's worked as hard as anybody. A captain for the team, tremendous leader, 
and a positive force. Has had a great season. Made some big saves just to keep J.D. in striking distance in this game. Down four with two minutes to go. But unfortunately for the Red Rams, the other team's got the ball. And it's Robert Grimm, one of the best players in the section. Weaves across the midfield line. A split dodge. Gets himself in the box. Now he's got to keep it in. Down it to Thomas. Thomas took a shot and draws a flag. Jeff Vetter argues his case to no avail. And the Red Rams will go a man down with 1.40 on the clock. Make it even tougher to get that ball away. And as the goalie now will probably have to take a chance and get out of the cage. So a minute and a half left for the Comets to kill off. Oh, Grimm had it stripped from behind. Good job by Mike Fiacco to take the ball away. And now Fiacco gives it up. Stone with it. Jump shot. Gable, another save. Well, Kyle Gable not nearly size-wise as big as his older brother Ben, but makes himself look very big in that cage when they come down the field. That's the whole secret. It's like in soccer. I tell you, get big, you know, make your body as big, then get your stick moving. And he made himself big and looks like he's going to have only a minute and five left to fight off the rest of his JD rally. Better looks for a cutter. Out top he goes to Braytech. Braytech got rid of it just before he lost his footing. What oh, great catch by Edwards on the bounce. Now they feed to Braytech inside, but. Could not get it much of a shot off, and Gable scoops up the ground ball. His outlet, though, taken away by Nice. And the final 40 seconds. One more chance for J.D. Vetter lost his man and then shot it wide, and Gable hustles out for the backup. And the Comets will get it back. Good shot by Gable. You know, not only do you have to make a save, you got to get your butt out of there on a shot, see if you can get to the end line, and Gable did. They get the clear across midfield. And now the Comets fans start to celebrate a little bit early. They've waited a while at Carthage. Very proud program in the North Country. Five-time sectional champs, but none since 2002. And in their last sectional title game in 2003, they blew the lead late to Janesville DeWitt and lost. They waited a long time to get even. And they do here tonight. The Comets onto the field as Section 3 champions. 10-6 the final, knocking off the defending state champs here tonight. The Carthage Comets celebrating, and Kevin Cook is as well. And nice to see as he jumps on top of the pile. He's smart, right? Yeah, that's Waste right. Wait till all the guys are on there. Be the last guy on. Jump on top. So the celebration is on for the Comets. It's going to be a fun bus ride back to the North Country. The Comets moving on in the state playoffs, taking out the defending state champs. Come on back to Coin Field. Back at Coin Field, the Carthage Comets moving on to the state playoffs. They'll play Saturday at 1 o'clock up at Central Square against the Section 10 champions. The Comets into the state playoffs for the first time since 2002 as they win their sixth sectional title here tonight. How about the clears for the Red Rams? 19 of 19, but the ground ball is probably the biggest difference. Yeah, double, 35-17, uh, uh, and, and, and shots 34-22. to 22. They really have some good shooters, and they put a lot of pressure on J.D. Started early when J.D. defenseman lost his stick, and they got an easy goal, and then they started getting the face-offs and the momentum. J.D. came back, gave them credit. They did a lot of nice things at the end, just too much to overcome, and lost by four. But 
you can tell these teams, both of them, excellent teams. Too much to overcome, and Kyle Gable in the nets. 12 saves for Carthage, so when JD did get a little momentum and get a little something going, Kyle Gable, more often than not, was there to uh, kind of quell the rally and keep things uh, in front for Carthage. Uh, again, the Comets jumping out early in this game. They score the first five goals of this one and led 6-1 to one at the half. A uh, spirited rally by the Red Rams, the uh, proud defending state champs in the second half. Comes up four goals short. And Carthage will move on. They avenge a one-goal loss to the Red Rams just a couple of weeks ago. How about that Robert Grimm, though? No wonder he had to play it. He, he plays constantly, and he sprints one end of the field to the other, and uh, very, very impressed with uh, him as a lacrosse player. And uh, pretty good uh, for a coach, uh, Vena Quattro, when your best player is also your hardest worker. And nobody's jersey is going to be more saturated than Robert Grimm's out there. It's your game, fellas. Good game. Good game. Good game. So Robert Grimm with four goals. His brother Thomas had two, so the Grimm brothers with six of the ten for Carthage. Zach Mulvaney also had two, including one 45 seconds into the game that kind of set the tone a little bit and let the uh, Red Rams know that the Comets were here for a little vengeance and looking for a sectional title. A very proud history up at Carthage. And now that continues here tonight. Jamie Archer and Kirk Vinacuatro meeting to congratulate each other. Great seasons for both, and for one it continues as the Comets will uh, now head to the state championship and uh, look for their first state title. In uh, quite a while, made it to the state championship back in 2002, and now they're moving on. Let's again throw it to our PA announcer here for some great presentation. Awards. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Odie Marshall, president of the Central New York Chapter of U.S. Lacrosse Federation, is presenting to the Class B Section 3 champion, Carthage Comets, a plaque representative of this achievement. And now, Mr. Tom Hall, coordinator of Section 3 Boys Lacrosse, is presenting to the captains of the Carthage Comets, the patches and certificates representative of their being the Class B Section 3 champions. And on behalf of us, all of us here in Central New York, we wish you the very best of luck in your pursuit of the state championship. So the Comets moving on. And uh, they have played in two state championship games in 2000 and in 2002, have not won a state title. But now just a few wins away, and Dale uh, with a great goalie. And uh, the kind of scores they have, the Grimm brothers and such. Why not? Why not know, this they've year? Got, they've got a great opportunity, and uh, any of the teams from Section 3 moving on are going to have a great opportunity. It's going to be a tough road to haul, but you know what? These players are good. I think they played hard tonight, and they've got a, they've got a couple of games left before they can get into the state finals. But uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised to see them there. All right, our Time Warner Sports players of the game, Mike Edwards for Janesville DeWitt as he tried to lead the comeback for the Red Rams and for the Carthage Comets, Robert Grimm, four goals and two assists, six points in the championship game. And Robert Grimm, a sectional champion on the football field and the lacrosse field, and he's downstairs with Dan Liebke. Thank you very much, Mark. Robert, that was a good team you really took it to. How were you guys able to get it done tonight? Uh, you know, patience on O. Our defense really stepped it up. We uh, tried to limit the transitions and man downs, and I think we did a pretty good job doing that and uh, came on top. Halftime, you had a pretty pretty comfortable lead, but what did you say to yourself during the break to keep yourself focused and keep the pedal to the metal? Uh, you know, we knew we couldn't keep, give up. Uh, these guys fight hard all game, and uh, they're never out of it. So we, uh, we knew we had to keep a foot down and uh, keep pushing. Congratulations. Go enjoy it with your teammates. Appreciate it. Coach, uh, you know, what can you say? You, you dominated pretty pretty well, but I have to say every time that J.D. made a run, your goaltender there was there to stand in. Talk about his play. Well, Kyle Gable is an outstanding goalkeeper. Uh, you know, uh, 
He didn't get a chance to like, make a lot of big saves this year because we beat people so easily. But every time he's had to step up, like tonight, he's a champion. And Kyle Gable is a heck of a goalkeeper. JD, Carthage, two teams that really put lacrosse on the map in this area. Is it any sweeter beating them headed to the States? Well, Coach Pistello told me before he retired he was going to overtake us back when we were on a nice run, and he did that and retired, and I told that to uh, Jamie. Now, I'm not retiring, but at least it's been a four- or five-year battle to get back, and I'm proud and honored to have taken it back from J.D. That's the only way we really would have felt, felt we deserved it. Coach, best of luck. Impressive performance. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys being here. I give a shout-out to my brother, Dominic. Couldn't be here. He's in the hospital recovering from a knee uh, surgery. Dominic, get better. Send it back upstairs, guys. All right, very good. It's all good for the Venequattro family and the Grimm family and the Coster family and all the Carthage Comets. Moving on to the state playoffs. We'll come back and wrap it up after this. Carthage Comets are Section 3 champions in Class B, 10-6 over the defending champs, and now the Comets move on. J.D. Red Rams 16-game winning streak is over, and Carthage representing Section 3 in the state playoffs, just like the girls' team. I think they both uh, played well tonight, and Carthage is going to have a good run in the states. I feel very confident. They've been pointing toward this year since Robert Grimm was just a youngster that maybe this would be their year. Well, so far it is. Coach Venequatra says his young kids, they're not interested in history. They weren't part of it. Well, they are part of it now as their sectional champions and now look to move on and perhaps win the school's first state championship later this month. For now, from Coin Field, it's time to say goodnight for my broadcast partner, Dale Drive Poulter and Dan Liebke, and for our producer director, Peter Gaines, and our outstanding Time Warner Sports crew, I'm Mark Larson saying goodnight from Syracuse University, where the Carthage Comets our Section 3 champs. We'll see you again real soon. This has been a presentation of Time Warner Sports.